Karate Goes Beyond, beyond, the, dojo. beyond the Dojo. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Funakoshi's 8th precept is such an obvious one, I wonder why he bothered to make it one of his precepts in the first place. Then again, looking at many dojos today, I can see where some might forget this. Karate goes beyond the dojo. You see, the objective of Karate Do is to polish and mature both the mind and body. The development of your spirit and mental attitude begins by practicing within these four walls, or within however many walls your dojo has. But it should not end there. After training is done, when you exit your training grounds with your bag over your shoulder, both your mental and physical exercises should continue. So train karate in and out of the dojo. Train your body for karate by training karate, but also doing cardio, watching your diet, or try to. Practice your karate physically, but also mentally. Visualization techniques are a great way to improve any skill by a significant amount and it also helps in strengthening the bond between you and karate. Too often do I see great karate practitioners quit way too soon. Usually this is when sports karate doesn't or no longer pays off. Or just because karate fatigue kicks in. It saddens me to lose these people, knowing they never even tasted what true karate is all about. So a tip I can give as someone halfway through his third decade in the martial arts, try to look beyond the physical and invest real time into it. It is a lifelong path, not a shortcut. Doing puzzles, crosswords, memory games, etc. will help greatly with your mental fitness now, but especially as you grow older. Karate should be a way of life, not just a sport, hobby or even a system for self-defense. It should become a part of you, making every step you take, every move you make. Linked to karate in some way or form, karate is what gives a karateka his power. It is an energy source created by lifelong training. It surrounds us and penetrates us and holds the galaxy together. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm taking it a little too far. We're not Jedi and karate isn't the force. But the way we should treat karate does have some similarities to it. It's not a religion, it's not a cult, even if it's treated like it on some places on earth. It is a way to deal with life in a constructive, healthy fashion. Karate goes beyond the dojo. Karate makes you more disciplined, more confident and more respectful. It makes you act with integrity. There is another side to this. If you follow the logic of this precept, that means your training translates to a more disciplined, respectful attitude towards life. However, if you live your life in excess with too much drinking, too much eating, just generally too much everything, then this will soon carry over to practice in the dojo. This will lead to fatigue of both mind and body, making it impossible to ever realize the goal of your training. So to summarize. Whether inside or outside the dojo, karate practitioners must always aim to develop and train both their minds and their bodies because, and say it with me, karate goes beyond the dojo. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day and as always, thanks for watching. Some people sleep with a gun under their pillow. Chuck Norris sleeps with a pillow under his gun.